On this episode of Wrecked, a brutal Chicago snowstorm means big business for O'Hare. Chicago's gonna get hit with it really bad. Suburb, city, highway, pick a place. It's icy. Waiting for the misery and the tragedies. At any given time, we can end up with somebody getting hit. The O'Hare crew must perform a balancing act to recover a car that crashed into a ditch. Son of a bitch. A trailer is frozen in a mound of snow, and the O'Hare crew tries to rip it out. Hey! And operator Dwight Lee is pushed to his breaking point. If I don't get no lunch out this motor assist, it's a wrap for me. Chicago has more than 20,000 miles of highway full of breakdowns, spills, and wrecks. It's a dangerous mess, and somebody's got to clean it up. Bill runs O'Hare Towing with his wife, Marcy, his brother, Joey, a fleet of high-tech trucks, and a team of dedicated drivers who risk their lives every day, ready to respond at a moment's notice to the next big wreck. Each year, an average of 40 inches of snow falls on the Windy City. For drivers, that means slick roads and icy bridges. For O'Hare Towing and its owner, Bill Graziana, it's the busiest time of the year. Oh, when it snows, for us, it's like a white gold or it's, uh, it's a color of money when it's coming down. It's like money falling from the sky. We're uh, basically all hands on deck and waiting for the misery and the tragedies. A little gruesome to think about it like that, but uh, one man's fortune is another man's misfortune. When it snows, everyone who works for O'Hare is required to report for duty. Pretty much everybody's day off is canceled to cover for the snow. The cold means it's going to be busy. Trucks are going to be breaking down. We're actually right in the middle. This is the snow right here. Chicago is going to get hit with it really bad. 315, head over to 290 in Lake. A vehicle stuck in the card rail. On Interstate 290, one driver has just learned the hard way how dangerous Chicago's wintry roads can be. He hit a patch of ice, lost control of his car, crashed through a guardrail, and ended up face first at the bottom of a ditch. The car might be totaled. But now the race is on before the rubberneckers take control of I-290. Huh. What do you know? Jamison Tiscus and Chuck Feger hit the scene and quickly size up the situation. He did a real number on the guardrail over here. How the hell did this guy go over this thing? This isn't going to be easy, but Jamison has a plan. I'm gonna pick it right up. First, he'll thread the recovery straps through the vehicle, creating multiple points of tension. Then he'll pick the car up by its rear. Next, he'll have to unhook and reposition his straps to the front of the vehicle. Finally, he'll be able to lift the car safely up and over the rail. You're gonna have six points and we're actually gonna get tight. Spread throughout those six points, it shouldn't do any damage to the body or the undercarriage. Make sure you get the end of my boom over the guardrail. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick the ass end up Get it over the rail, put it down, swing over and pick the front end up, swing it over the rail. You got it? Yeah. All right, get out of there. He's able to settle the car into position on the guardrail. Just take that side. Now it's time to reposition the straps to the front of the car and try to teeter-totter it over the rail. Make sure it's flat, just like that. Center of the bumper. All right, get out of there. Son of a bitch. But the recovery straps aren't cutting it. Jameson has to rethink his plan. Thought of another incident I once did, did the same thing, didn't have that problem. Figure you do it again, you always run into an obstacle where it's just not gonna work out the exact same way. Jameson won't let this guardrail get the best of him. He runs an extra support cable through one of the rear tires, and instead of pulling the nose of the car up, he pulls the back of the car down. Ah. 
right, halfway done. Now all they have to do is pull the car back onto the street. We're gonna get that strap in between here. Just keep the strap on the inside of the wheel. Finally, the car is back on solid ground. It wasn't exactly doing what I thought it would do, but uh, you'll find that that happens a lot more than you think. You plan on something going one way, you end up having to do totally something different. Jamison and Chuck were able to clear the road just in time for the morning rush. Back at O'Hare's headquarters, veteran heavy duty operator Dwight Lee is just starting his shift. Hey, I didn't climb my up. Yeah, it. Dwight forgot to uh, plug his truck in last night. One truck that didn't start. Joey Graziana is in charge of the O'Hare shop. It's his job to make sure tow trucks are up and running. So we got here this morning and it was uh, subarctic temperatures were in the negative numbers and his truck did not start. The minute it gets past 32 degrees, you don't plug a diesel motor in, you're done. Start it up and leave her running, dude. How bad was she knocking? And after we got the battery charger on it and primed the fuel system, she started. But a rookie mistake, an hour delay. Our customers are hurting. I'm out here aggravated. It's cold out here. Dwight finally gets his wrecker on the road, but his day is already off to a bad start. Coming up. A cargo container stuck in a mound of ice means the O'Hare crew must work together to get it free. Hey! And the calls keep coming as the winter weather takes its toll on motorists. People are gonna be rushing to get home, traffic's gonna be horrible, and they're gonna be driving like champs. In Chicago, an afternoon storm covers the city in a fresh coat of snow. Whenever you see that little winter storm warning alert, you get that little funny twinkle in your eye. People are gonna be rushing to get home. Traffic's gonna be horrible and they're gonna be driving like champs. Suburbs, city, highway, pick a place. It's ice. And everyone at O'Hare Towing is working double time, trying to assist motorists as they fall victim to the winter weather. Jamison and Rich are working to free a semi stuck on an ice patch. We gotta reposition. We gotta pull the tractor back. While in the burbs, Mike is winching a car that slid right onto someone's front lawn. Get up. Unfortunately, it parked on a snowbank, so that might give us a problem here. And Dwight is headed to the opposite side of Chicago, where the storm is just starting to hit. Trykowski already out here. That was him calling me, telling me that we are towing these trailers. A cargo container needs to be moved to make room at a construction site. If they wait till after the storm, it'll be a lot more difficult. Well, let me go in and look and see what's going on with this. They can't get to the front of the trailer because it's up against a fence and half of it is buried under a giant mound of snow. This is gonna be more than just a two person job. Oh, what's up you SOB? <laughs> Luckily, Dwight spots a familiar face, a former O'Hare driver that just happens to run the crane that's on site. They're gonna need all the help they can get. I'll move some of the stuff out of the way and I'll just grab it and swing it around. Dude. Their plan is to use the crane to lift the front of the trailer up and dislodge it from the mound of ice. All that snow and ice had built up against the side of the trailer and it actually froze the trailer in place. That's when you've seen it pop up. Now that the trailer is free, they can start hooking up their winch lines. Dwight's job is to pull the trailer from the back while the crane operator simultaneously holds the front of the giant container off the ground. And Trike is in the middle, directing them both. What I did is we positioned Dwight behind it to winch the trailer backwards while the crane rotated the front because there's no wheels on that front end. He held the front end up and just turned with it so that Dwight was able to load that unit up real easy. They're able to get it in a position where Dwight can hook up to the front of the trailer.
They prep the container for towing and the job is complete. Dwight takes the trailer back to the junkyard, but he still hasn't had a chance to stop for lunch. When it snows, everyone at O'Hare has to sacrifice, but some drivers just deal with it better than others. He's a crabby bitch if he doesn't get his lunch. He must have a tapeworm, because if he doesn't eat by 1 o'clock, it, it's, it's unbelievable. If I don't get a lunch this time, I think I'm going to raise a little hair. Sometimes you got to act a damn fool to get better results. Coming up, Trike is ready to tow a tanker that's stuck in the snow, but he has to find it first. Next time we decide to do the lions and tigers and bears on mine, you know, I'm not fond of over the hill and through the wood. And Dwight needs a break, but he's not going to get any sympathy from Bill. If you want to be in the towing business, you need to be prepared for the long hours. I'm not a robot. I can just keep going and going without nothing to eat, man. But if I don't get no lunch after this motor sis, it's a wrap for me. In Chicago, it's been a busy day for O'Hare towing. The snowy conditions and slippery roads ensure that they will stay busy. I think Chicago's got the craziest weather I've ever seen in my life. I think it's freaking awesome. Outside city limits, Mike Trykowski has just arrived on location where a tanker truck is slid off the road, but the tanker is nowhere in sight. Trike calls Javier, who is already on the scene, somewhere down the icy road. This road isn't even salted. Dude, you're driving on ice. I ain't driving on this thing. Not that it's a nice day for leisurely walking the forest or nothing. Well, you know, next time we decide to do the lions and tigers and bears on mine, you know, I'm not fond of over the hill and through the woods. We get around this bend, according to the tire tracks, we should see the stuck truck. Javier has been waiting down the road from the tanker. If he takes his wrecker much further, he runs the risk of getting stuck. Trike moves in to take a closer look. What's happened here is the air ride has deflated, causing this truck to get himself stuck on a snow mound. Javier's truck has enough power to drag the tanker out of the ice, but only if he can get within winching range. Bon bonsai it! Stay in it! That's it, we'll fight there, good. Set it up, we'll do it. Now that Javier is in position, they run the winch lines to the tanker. It's gonna naturally wanna pull. What's gonna happen is it's gonna turn these wheels. At this point in time, you're gonna leave your brakes set so it spins on your drives. Okay. We're gonna start winching it out right now. We'll have this thing out of here in a little bit. Hold your foot on the brake. There you go, just like that. Release your brakes. Yeah. OK. Good, now step on your brake. Keep going. Keep going. Let them spin it. You got to admit, that's pretty cool. Good. It's good. Don't get them too far in. The tanker is free from the ice and ready to make its next delivery if it doesn't get stuck again. Think you'll make it down the hill? Back at O'Hare, dispatch is frantically trying to get operators out to assist motorists. Dispatch was the uh, hopping place today. Oh, it's harder to bad weather because I find somebody fast. A lot of winch outs, a lot of car winch outs, a couple semis, nose dives, stuff like that. A lot of right off the highway they go. 607, Dwight. And I 55 going to uh, 355. Motorist assist on a motorhome. Dwight arrives on scene, but still hasn't had time for lunch. You got to get some lunch, man. I understand we might be busy, but at the same time, you got to speak up for your lunch. And if you don't, they'll keep on running you and running you and running you. Dwight pushes on and gets to work hooking up the RV for towing. Can't get past because of the ice right there. See if that'll work for us. Ah, perfect. Got to get down and dirty some days in the snow. So now I'm lifting it up to get it out of here. OK, the next step is I got to look and see about the dry shaft. The reason why we pull the dry shaft is just to, uh, being taken a caution of not damaging the transmission. The drive shaft is the link between the wheels on the ground and the transmission. When the engine is running, it powers the pump that sends transmission fluid to the gears. 
When a car is being towed, the wheels continue to roll and the gears in the transmission continue to turn. But with the engine pump off, the transmission runs dry. Without lubrication, the gears will grind and can fail or even catch on fire. Removing the drive shaft makes it so the car can be towed without engaging the transmission. Some drive shafts, you ain't gonna be able to manhandle this easy. The RV is ready to be towed, and Dwight is more than ready for a break. Don't just keep sending me call after call after call and spec. I just supposed to do it, just say, forget about my lunch? No, no, it don't work like that. Base is 607. But he can forget about that. The winter weather and a broken down ambulance have other plans for Dwight. If you want to be in the towing business, you need to be prepared for the long hours. I'm not a robot. I can just keep going and going without nothing to eat, man. And I don't have any drivers working here that look like they missed a meal. I do this motor assist, but if I don't get no lunch out this motor assist, it's a wrap for me. It's a wrap. Coming up, conditions worsen, and so does the danger as the O'Hare crew works on the side of a busy interstate in the middle of the night. At any given time, we can end up with somebody getting hit, and that happens more regularly than I want to admit. In Chicago, day turns into night and the weather worsens. Jameson has been working nonstop since before 7 a.m. as he responds to yet another call. I was kind of hoping the snow had stopped, but uh, that was probably too much to ask for. Uh, it's going to be a wet, floppy night. The slippery roads have caused one commuter to lose control of his vehicle and spin out into a ditch. Chuck Fieger, one of O'Hare's new light duty drivers, is already on the scene. Well, we got a car. Hey, whoever hit the wall, I don't know if they hit the wall or what they hit, but they took off before the officers got here and left the, left the car abandoned. When Jameson arrives, Chuck gets him up to speed. Um, is there anything wrong with it? Major front end damage on the side. It looked like they hit the wall. They took off. They left the car there. All right. You should be able to do it. I'm not too worried about it. Um, if I thought it was something bigger, I'd tell him to get the hell out of the way, and I'd do it. But uh, there's no reason why he shouldn't be able to do this. Because of the heavy traffic, they can't put the flatbed in the middle of the road. Instead, they'll position Chuck's rig parallel to the wreck. Once they get into place, they'll attach a winch to the left side of the van and slowly pull it up to the shoulder. Then, once it's up on level ground, it should be a cinch to just drag it straight onto the flatbed. I'm looking for the hookup point on the, uh, the frame of this thing to throw the uh, J-hook into. Being with the tire as uh, messed up as it is, uh, it's causing me some uh, limited amount of room to get my arm in there. Jameson has to get down and dirty in the slush. While bad conditions mean big business for O'Hare, it's not much fun for the operators themselves. It's a hard enough job when all the conditions and, and the environment and is all perfect. But nobody's really prepared for 20 below and 20 hours of it. We work some long and hard days in this winter. Every tow truck driver knows when the weather's bad, we're rolling all day. The bad weather also adds an additional element of danger. Our driver's safety is always a paramount concern for us, and it gets increasingly difficult when it's icy and snowy. At any given time, we can end up with you know somebody getting hit, and that, that happens pretty regularly, more more regularly than I than I want to admit. Everybody's all happy now; it's snowing. Oh, great! Careful what you wish for. <laughs> Jameson is having trouble. The destroyed front wheel won't turn, making it difficult to guide the van in a straight line onto the flatbed. Well, the axle on this side's broke. This side is actually preventing me from getting a straight pull on it. I'm gonna stick a ski under it. It'll drag, like, cause right now, this tire wants to pull it that way and the other tire is pulling it the other way. And on a grade, you know, it's kind of splitting us. So I'm trying to make it so this tire will go whatever direction I want it to go. Free spool the cable. Jameson and Chuck are able to get the van off the side of the road and onto the flatbed. That went rather well. We were able to do it using just the uh, light duty uh, flatbed. We stayed on the shoulder. We didn't have any lane shut down. Uh, kept state police happy. 
Jameson heads back to O'Hare, and his long day has finally come to an end. I had a long and busy day today. Dwight has just finished up a 13-hour day, and he's not feeling very appreciated. Now, actually, I did not get a, a lunch break. Some days that happen, but it really works me up. Hey, Dwight. Bill and I need to talk to you before you leave. OK. Right. You want to go outside? Yeah. Y'all gather. I thought it was an interview. We're shipping out right now. And yeah. Happy birthday, Dwight. I appreciate y'all. Right now, I'm a little. Don't be a bitch. Blow the camera. No, I was, I was, I was just, just happy. I appreciate it. Oh, 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 that was two. Three. That was a tree. Spit in it. They caught me off guard. And right now, I got a little emotional. Got a little tears in my ass. Now listen, this is probably gonna come back to bite me in the ass, but you take tomorrow off and it's on me and you have a good birthday. It always makes you feel good when the guys appreciate what you do for them and you know, we appreciate so much what they do for us every day. It's very nice what they did for me and uh, I was a little, you know, a little frustrated, but it's all part of the job. That was a good birthday gift and I really appreciate what he did for me. The snow has finally stopped falling. And though it's never easy, the crew of O'Hare Towing was able to dig deep and safely make it through another winter storm. It was a really crazy day, but I'm happy it's slowing down. Everybody's back safe and sound, which I'm always grateful for. Everybody gets to go home and see their families. My wife's done for the day. Elle was leaving the building. <laughs> Oh, I'm not going to throw it. You're going to eat it. Come on, let's go. You ain't got the arm. <laughs> OK, that was close. Close the door. I'll take the glass. OK. Oh, cool. <laughs> 